And let's start with some breaking inputs which have just come in, where the US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has in fact addressed a press conference where he has highlighted the important aspects of his talks that he's had with the North Korean officials, especially considering the fact that the North Korean officials had in very strong statements said that the United States was making unilateral demands that were completely contradictory to the spirit of the 12th of June Singapore summit. And they also said that the demands which the United States had expressed were gangster-like and therefore something which North Korea could not comply with. However, Mike Pompeo in his press conference stated that the United States was committed to talks and also had clearly highlighted the need to have a specific timeline in which denuclearization could in fact be carried out by North Korea. Let's listen in to what Mike Pompeo had to say. Talk about uh, North Korea. I, I want to say that we are closely following the news of the flooding and landslides that are hitting western Japan. Uh, the United States expresses its deep condolences to the families of those who died, and we send our thoughts and prayers to the families uh, who are injured or missing. To our Japanese friends, the American people stand with you as you recover from this tragedy. Uh, as we build on the momentum of President Trump and Chairman Kim Jong-un's historic summit, the United States, the Republic of Korea, and Japan continue to strengthen our trilateral cooperation to achieve the goals set out in Singapore. To that very end, today's meeting was a top priority after my talks in North Korea these past days. Over two days, my team and I met with Vice Minister Chairman Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-un, and his colleagues. We had good faith, productive conversations, which will continue in the days and weeks ahead. In the meantime, sanctions remain in place and we will continue to enforce them with great vigor. During the visit, we intended to build upon the agreements made by President Trump and Chairman Kim, and we made progress. But first, let me make clear, North Korea reaffirmed its commitment to complete denuclearization. We had detailed and substantive discussions about the next steps towards a fully verified and complete denuclearization. In addition, North Korea agreed to meet in mid-July in Panmunjom uh, to discuss the repatriation of remains of our American service members. North Korea also reaffirmed its earlier commitment to destroy its missile engine test site, which will make the region and the world safer. We also established a working level team that will carry out the day-to-day -day work of our two sides. Yep, the road ahead will be difficult and challenging, and we know critics will try to minimize the work that we've achieved, but our allies, like the Republic of Korea and Japan, President Trump and I believe that peace is worth the effort. And that's something that we all want. As allies, we share and are committed to the same goal, the fully verified final denuclearization of North Korea, as agreed to by Chairman Kim Jong-un. As President Trump has said, there is no limit to what North Korea can achieve if it gives up its nuclear weapons. Should the DPRK follow through on its commitments, we look forward to eventually helping North Korea obtain prosperity and earn the respect of the world. However, North Korea will first have to fulfill its commitments to denuclearize. Sanctions will remain in place until final fully verified denuclearization, as agreed to by Chairman Kim, occurs. Multiple UN Security Council resolutions, unanimously passed, require all nations to fully enforce those sanctions. Our three countries will continue to be vocal in reminding each country of its obligations to do so. And so, while we are encouraged by the progress of these talks, progress alone does not justify the relaxation of the existing sanctions regime. There is also no change to our ironclad commitment to the defense of our allies, the Republic of Korea and Japan. The security of our allies is integral to our American security. The United States looks forward to continuing our close coordination with Japan and South Korea as we achieve the successful imp implementation of the agreement that was achieved at the Singapore summit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lastly, 
Let us invite Minister Kang Yongfa. All right, so down towards the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, clearly highlighting what the United States expected North Korea to do. Meanwhile, he's also reiterated that the sanctions will continue to stay. But what is interesting in the talks between North Korea and also the United States is the completely a different tone in which both the nations seem to be speaking. On the one hand, the North Koreans have described the talks to be gangster-like dictation by the United States, while Mike Pompeo has described the talks to be fruitful and productive ones.